We'll switch now to talking about a couple important special considerations in delirium. The first is near and dear to my heart and something that I'm always mindful of, and that is catatonia. Increasingly, catatonia is being recognized in patients with delirium, and there is starting to be described a significant overlap between symptoms of catatonia and symptoms of delirium, particularly in patients with a hypoactive delirium. This causes a significant dilemma when it comes to management because we would typically use benzodiazepines for catatonia, though they can make delirium worse, and we would typically use antipsychotics for delirium, but those can make catatonia worse. An important principle for physicians to keep in mind if they see patients who look both delirious and catatonic is that benzodiazepines are in fact sometimes helpful in this situation, even despite the delirium. So my first choice would usually be to try some intravenous lorazepam to see if the catatonia responds, even if I think the person is delirious. I can then make a decision about where to go from there once I've confirmed whether there is a response to the benzodiazepine. In terms of other agents, the two I would most often go to in this setting are amantadine and memantine. Both have been shown to be helpful in cases of catatonia, and neither will have deleterious effects for a delirious patient. And in fact, memantine may actually have some beneficial effects in delirium. Always remember to use antipsychotics with extreme caution in any patient who looks catatonic due to the risk of precipitating a malignant catatonia. So even if somebody has a prominent delirium, if they have catatonic features, I'm going to shy away from using antipsychotics in that situation. The second special consideration that I want to talk about is one that's on everybody's mind, and that is what do we do for delirious patients who are infected with SARS-CoV-2, the so-called COVID delirium. Delirium, as many of you know, is being frequently described in patients with COVID-19. It's actually now one of the key symptoms and maybe a presenting symptom. There's also, interestingly, a syndrome seen in delirious patients with COVID-19 that looks very much like catatonia or akinetic mutism with abulia, elogia, and rigidity being described. And there are all sorts of hypotheses in terms of why patients with COVID-19 may get delirious, including ideas about a primary delirium, like an encephalitis, or a secondary delirium caused by other systemic effects. We developed an algorithm based on our anecdotal experience early in the course of COVID, and a similar algorithm was independently developed by folks at Stanford, and they align really well. In both algorithms, first-line agents for COVID delirium include melatonin or melatonin agonists, as well as alpha-2 agonists. This is because antipsychotics carry some increased risk in these patients, particularly around EPS, QT prolongation, given other medications they may be receiving, and catatonia. And so we want to just move the antipsychotic step back one beat. So generally, we'd start with melatonin, and then we'd start with an alpha-2 agonist, and then if we needed something else, we would typically reach for an antipsychotic. The choice of antipsychotic in the setting of COVID may also be driven by the potential side effects. One agent that we had a lot of experience with early in the pandemic was chlorpromazine, which again is available in IV form. It's low potency, so it carries a lower risk of worsening EPS or causing catatonia. And we found it to be a particular good choice for patients with a COVID delirium. Interestingly, though, I would also highlight that IV haloperidol is not only useful in COVID delirium, but it's actually being studied as a treatment for COVID given its sigma effects. Key points in this section include the ideas that catatonia is increasingly recognized in patients with delirium, particularly those of a hypoactive variety. In patients with catatonia and delirium, we would consider first using benzodiazepines, but also using amantadine and memantine. For patients with a COVID delirium, you want to consider using melatonin and alpha-2 agonists prior to using antipsychotics. And in those patients, chlorpromazine may be a particularly good choice for an antipsychotic agent, though other agents like IV haloperidol and second-generation antipsychotics can certainly be used. <laughs> 